Right, hey guys, how are we doing? Back on another video from Giguk. Doesn't upload very often, but when he does, it's always a big hitter. And we have got... Where's the problem with reviewing anime? <laughs> I was trying to find it in my folder here, like, ah! The problem with reviewing anime. And I'm sure there's a lot of problems with this, because my god, everyone's so opinionated. As soon as put, you put out what you point. think, the people hate you. <laughs> Man, when one Neanderthal turned to another while looking at some of the very first cave paintings ever created and said, which Monkey probably braid. translates to, yeah, the light novel was better. Games, movies, books, <laughs> yeah, okay. all these mediums have a pretty Let's, fail safe oh, the material. To reviewing. You play, watch, or read the title in question, then you give your opinion on it. Yes. Sometimes you can even add a little score at the end so you can give everyone a reason to skip your actual review and just summarise all your nuanced opinions into a single numerical uh, fact. Yeah, because IGN always put in the thumbnail like what they like think straight away, don't they? <laughs> In recent times, reviewing outlets have become somewhat of a controversial topic, especially if they come from some sort of mainstream media outlet. But mm. you can't deny that they do have an effect on their industry. It's an art form that has given people careers. Good review scores can have a tangible effect on sales and hype, but well, compared yeah, of course. to other mediums, anime Whoa. reviewing seems to be in this unique spot in that nobody really gives a shit about them. Hey, <laughs> And today wow, we're okay. going to be talking about a topic no one really cares about for a problem that doesn't actually matter. <laughs> anime reviews is something I'll always hold near and dear to my heart because, well, That's what you do. it's where I found a lot of my early anime yeah. and it's also where I found my own beginnings. There you go, yeah. This is my first anime review and today <laughs> oh, I'm whoa. This is the first video I ever created Old that school. I originally posted on YouTube over 13 years ago. It's a review of each that I've scripted, recorded and edited in a day. And it is an atrocity. <laughs> <laughs> oh, damn. Kid, trying to do his best zero punctuation impression recorded with a five dollar USB mic. Oh, bless me, gotta start somewhere. My god, Google image slideshow. And worst of all, I gave Bleach a seven out of ten. But you may be wondering <laughs> what the big difference is between younger Gigak's shitty opinion about anime and right. older Gigak's shitty opinion about anime. Well, young Gigak thought he knew what he was talking about because he had anime protagonist hair. Back then, Damn. anime reviews were the staple of anime critiques <laughs> I look like online. it, so I am I it. I can't <laughs> count the number of new animes I discovered back then just because of specialised review sites and myself trying to look for shows with high review scores. Damn, uh. this is a four-star on them anime reviews and an A on a and N. Shit, I better give this show a try. Give it a go. Right now, yeah. though, I feel like anime reviews are in this weird spot in that they are kind of just a non-factor in our community. This is certainly not an attack on anyone still doing anime reviews, nor am I saying that they've completely disappeared either. But I feel like I they appreciate have a few channels reviewing stuff. Mediums. With most of the stuff we see being close Super to analysis Battle. and editorials, and I feel there are a few reasons for this. Unlike games or movies, there isn't as big of a wall to overcome that consumers need to commit to in order to consume the product. Mm -hmm. For games, it's a paywall. You want to know if a game is worth dishing out $60 before you get it, and with movies, you generally want to make sure that it isn't a waste of time and money to go out and get a movie ticket and taking out a second mortgage to get the corresponding popcorn and drink set. Right, yeah. Compared to that, who really needs a full review when you can just chuck on an episode or two of an anime you're interested in to see if it's a show you want to fully commit to watch. There oh, isn't the same is so good, though. as there was before of having to buy physical DVDs or oh, there really was. It's so different now. It really is different now. Anime viewing. Yes. Oh, this is very valid. Looking up review scores because now shows are literally used to spend fifteen pounds on like five that, episodes. <laughs> Review some of the hottest, newest anime, everyone's already moved on. To give a show a fair review, it's common sense to, well, so quick. watch the entire thing. But for the newest shows, by the time it's fully aired and you get your review out to general everyone's audiences, watched it. it's like, oh, what's that? You reviewed the show? That's cool. Well, we, we watched it. Like, we already got our opinion. Yeah. And I think Damn. this has a unique effect on our community compared to others. We don't have a Metacritic or a Rotten Tomatoes giving us a metric score of curated critics, and because of this, a lot of hype is completely community driven, even with how much Very popular true. anime yeah. has gotten. But what this means is that what ends up getting watched isn't necessarily the best shows. It's just what can make the most noise as quickly as yes, possible. Yes, rent a girlfriend and all that. It's yeah. hard to review anime in the traditional sense compared to mediums like games or movies. And recently, there's been two shows in particular oh, that good, have really made me think about the reason for this. Attack on Titan yeah. and ReZero. Yeah. Let's start with Attack on Titan. If you've seen my video, Attack on Titan is Mate, incredible now. That's such a good video. My opinion on the series, and if you haven't, you can still probably guess that my opinion is that it's incredible. Yeah, well, yeah, it says it in the title. Now, last year, <laughs> this is the show that absolutely blew me away. There are a few words so I, good, I can't wait for the just season. how good this show has become and how much it's filled its potential. Every season has been building on its previous foundation, then consistently exceeding itself time after time. After Hell yeah, time it's always got better as it's gone on. It does. Yeah. 
final season just around the corner with every manga reader hyping it up as even better than everything that came before, I honestly feel this could have the potential to become the era defining anime. But if you had asked me what I thought seven years ago during the four year long wait before season two, I would have said, Attack on Titan? It's yeah. alright. It was alright. Yeah, yeah. It was a fun ride, but yeah, that was pretty exactly much. There you go, I don't yeah. want to repeat myself too much from what I've already said because there's also Re Zero. Now, if you've seen I've not watched video, any of season Re two Zero yet. Zero is no masterpiece, but it's still damn entertaining. You probably know my opinion on the series, and if you don't, you can still probably take a guess from the title. <laughs> it's no masterpiece, but, but it's, it's still, still damn, damn entertaining. entertaining. <laughs> Are we really doing this right now? I very much enjoyed Re Zero, but ultimately it didn't leave too deep an impression on me. I just my want to binge season two, two man. And season two apparently carrying on in, Japan, like in January, so what I think I'll do is I'll start watching it in December. Oh my god, so much <laughs> suffering. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing else there. I didn't know what everything was meant to be leading up to. And while there has been way more discourse highlighting the nuances around its world and themes and what the show was trying to say, my opinion has remained largely the same for those reasons. Fast forward to now, we have half of season two out and it's already addressed some of the biggest issues I Apparently had. Apparently Subaru gets like some mad character we development like. Of an antagonist group now. Subaru has been given time to really develop as a character. There we are, cool, we cool. more of an understanding of his motivations and why he acts the way he does. All the scattered pieces seem to be forming into a coherent whole, and on top of all That's of that, cool. you have Echidna. Best girl, fuck you, Rem, sorry Beatrice. But at the oh, same damn. time, now <laughs> that we're given a glimpse of the sheer scale of this world and the story, I very much doubt season two will even come close to showing everything this series has to offer. Yeah. But the more I see, the more I am absolutely impressed with. If you look at the cool. journey I've had with both these series, you start to see a very similar pattern. I was left with a concrete opinion that remained for years, which eventually got shattered when a lot it changed, of the when it came I originally back. had yeah. were completely addressed or solved in later seasons. Mm. Many more of the subtle nuances in the plot become clearer, sometimes recontextualizing massive events like, we never get Reviewing it straight away is difficult, isn't it? Because then you're like, mm, opinion changes. Bubble, yeah. Which begs the question, was it fair to judge a series that I knew was incomplete or were the problems I even had valid in I the I think it is if that's and all there is there. Like that, I realised that I could apply this to the vast majority of anime that I watch. The reality is, these series never existed in a bubble. They always had a manga or light novel that continued the story and explored You could have checked it out, but you didn't want to, yeah. Season ever could. Re Zero Season 1 was barely a prologue, but if you're an anime-only watcher, you had no choice but to judge it on its yeah, own. Just, but from my what god, it is. does this breed the most toxic interaction when it comes to anime only critiques versus manga reviews. Yep. One of the most common things you encounter in this community is this notion that if you're not completely caught up to date with the title and every medium it's available in, then your any opinion is not or opinion valid. You have completely yeah. become invalidated. Yeah, yeah. Plot holes addressed in later volumes. Annoying characters, oh well they have this flashback two hundred chapters later. Yeah, but later on later on problem you can have I wanna be anime only, thank you. <laughs> Go read the source material. You are wrong. La 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 la. Don't want to know about the source material. Yeah. Between manga and light novel readers and anime only watchers, but there must be a happy medium where we can all see eye to eye. <laughs> like on one hand, I do think any adaptation should be judged on its own merits, divorced from the source material. Yeah, but definitely. Hand, I think so. It's important to recognize from both sides that most adaptations are and always have been. I've talked before about how, as an anime fan, you get used to getting invested in worlds and stories that you may never and probably will never see the ending of. Yeah. And a lot of the times, those stories hardly even scratch the surface. Fireflies has gone down in history as a cult classic of a great time. And it never finished. <laughs> early, an we got Serenity, story, but, but still. For us anime fans, that's the norm. It's like if the vast majority of games you ever played were in early access and you'd never know if you'd be able to get oh, to play God, the yeah, product. interesting. Hmm. Sometimes you can wait a fucking decade we're just and used out of nowhere yeah. and the patch gets announced. But even then, it'll still be far from the finished product. Now, imagine if 80% of every game you ever played was like that. Well, oh, that's what it's out like to be rage. an anime fan. Yeah, yeah, and it yeah. probably always will be, as a lot of these shows are just seen as glorified advertisements for the source material. Mm -hmm. Maybe anime well, it's mainly it, though, isn't it? readers were destined to never it's see it the mangas, but it shouldn't never be meant that. to be a big mm. part of our community. I just find it funny how despite anime is growing closer to mainstream every year, this is one of the big differences that seems to remain. Look, I don't want you to get the wrong idea about everything I've said. Am I trying to say that every review on Mao is essentially worthless? Yes. <laughs> that's okay, because it means all our reviews are as worthless as each other. I'm kind of glad there's no <laughs> Alright, okay, group everyone in. And all the hype is for the most part community driven. 
We may have people's opinion who you listen to and trust, but that's likely because it was built up over time, rather than just because they were paid by an organisation. Oh, that damn. just means the focus on our community <laughs> is not the most highly respected and acclaimed anime, but just the shows that resonate with you and your taste. Because if there's a medium for every taste, this is it. I don't pretend to be a reviewer anymore. A lot of people misunderstand my videos as, Oh, hey, you got get another positive review for another show. <laughs> he just hypes up every show. Well, firstly, these aren't reviews. I just want to share some shit I like or find interesting. Yeah, I found that. Secondly, they don't seem to be very, shit, like... talk about them positively. Have you seen how many shows we have to pick from nowadays? <laughs> it, it, it's 2020. <laughs> Who the fuck has time to waste my... Oh, no, bless can go away, like man. It. That, 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 that started, anime's boring. Anime reviews held more weight because more often than not, we were talking about things we'd already finished, and you did have to go out and spend money to watch them. Yeah, you did, man. So least, annoying. Run the risk of getting your dad's I don't watch Escaflona, and I'm spending Nowadays, friggin' no fifteen pound on five episode. I'll go down in a line by. Just said, literally did that <laughs> when I was at uni. So the audience for reviews. Basically nowadays more I mean, it was a mixture of dub and sub because it didn't say the title was downloaded. looking to see if something's worth their time. It's often looking for an opinion to compare theirs to. Waiting for that number at the end so they can shout about how bad the reviewer is. Mm. Or, let's be real, waiting for that sweet old validation, baby. Yeah, that's right, you know what I mean. Have no fear, your opinion's correct. Someone on the internet told you so. Did you hear that, mom? Maybe you know what it feels like one day to forgive fans. In conclusion, I guess what I was trying to say is this video is kind of stupid. 4 out of 10. Go read the manga for full context. Ah, lame. <laughs> that was class. That was really good. Very valid. Like, everything's changed with anime over the years. But the way that reviews with video games and movies and that hasn't really changed that much. So, yeah. I suppose accessing the medium affects how you can review it. And anime is a lot more accessible than it used to be. And everyone's very opinionated now. <laughs> That was good. I love it when Google videos pop up. They're always very... Well, different. I'm really enjoying the Trash Takes podcast as well recently. I recommend that. But anyway, thank you guys very much for watching. What do you guys think of that? What do you guys think of this? Click like, subscribe, and leave comments down below. Let me know what you're watching. Discuss in future videos. And I'll see you guys. So, guys.